In this video series on packages that make your life a little easier on a day-to-day -day basis in Sublime Text, we first covered package control, the package that allows you to install other packages into Sublime and keep them updated. Now, packages are just collections of files, and sometimes you need to look into or modify the contents of those files. The easiest way to do that is with a package called Package Resource Viewer. <music> Hello, fellow Sublime Text fanatics. Odat Nerd here. Welcome to this video on Package Resource Viewer. Before we get into that, though, as a reminder, if you're finding these videos at all useful or helpful, please use those buttons down below the video to thumb, subscribe, and share as you deem appropriate for the situation. And if you have any questions or comments on the content of this video, any of the videos on the channel, or suggestions for other topics you'd like me to cover, including other packages you think might fit into this series, you can drop those down in the comments section below or hit me on Twitter at odatnerd. But we are here to talk about Package Resource Viewer. Now, as I said in the introduction, packages are just collections of files, and often you may need to look into one of those files. Perhaps you're researching how something is being done so that you can replicate something similar for yourself, or perhaps you may even want to make modifications to an existing package resource of some sort. Now, by way of example here, we'll recall if you were watching the videos on the channel on the common questions on build systems, we created a build system for tiny C, the tiny C compiler to allow me to easily build and run C programs. And when I trigger the build, we see the build output down below and it says, hello world. And in that video, what I did was just say, we're creating a new build system. And then I pasted in a pre-constructed build system and discussed it to save time. But how did I actually come up with that build system? I came up with that build system by looking at the build system for compiling C programs that ships directly with Sublime. And that's something you could use Package Resource Viewer to do. If we go into the command palette and type discover, we can use package control discover packages, and that's going to open your web browser on the packagecontrol.io website where you can search for packages. And if we search for resource viewer, say that's what we're interested in, package resource viewer is the first hit, and in fact, the only hit for this term. And we could click on this link and see some information about package resource viewer, including that it is in the top 100, it is a very popular package. It's been around for about six years. And if we scroll down, we can even see the readme for this package, which tells you how to install it and how you can use it and some settings you can use to control it. Now, this is very much a do as I say and not as I do, because we're going to skip back to sublime text in just a second here. But it's important to note that when you're working with a new package, you always want to read the readme where possible, because a lot of packages require you to perform extra configuration steps after installing them. In some cases, you even need to install external third-party software in order for the package to work. And you'll be very confused and not know what's going on if you don't read that help. We're not going to do that here. But we can jump back to Sublime Text. And if we want to install a package, remember, we just go into the command palette and type install. And we can see package control, install package. And once the list of packages is downloaded, we can type in some text that allows us to filter the list. And here's the package resource viewer package. And I'm going to hit enter. And it installed so quickly, I can't even zip the screen down in order to show you the text in the command uh, status uh, area of the window. Now, sometimes when you install packages or when package control upgrades them, a tab will open to give you information on the package that you just installed or the upgrade that just happened. This is something that's controlled by the author of the package and not by package control per se. So some packages don't do that. And package resource viewer is an example of one that does not in fact do that, which is well, we don't see anything here. Now, with that uh, package installed, if we go into the preferences menu, we can see under package settings, there's now an entry for package resource viewer. And in here, we can view the readme if you want to see how to work the package without having to go back to the package control web page. You can see what the default settings for the package is. And you can, of course, use the settings user to modify those default settings as you wish. Now, if we go into the command palette, all of the commands that package resource viewer 
includes in the command palette. Start with the text package resource viewer and there's three of them here and the one we're interested in here is open resource. Those extract ones we're going to talk about a little bit later and when you choose this it shows you a list of every package that's currently installed in your copy of Sublime and accessible and we could type C++ to get to the C++ package and hit enter. And then here is the C single file dot build and hitting that allows us to open that file in the background. It's allowing me to still edit, uh, open more additional files here and I can even go back and choose files from a different package if I want to. But now this file is open. Now this is and has been for a long while a key a component of working with Sublime and working with this package because the C++ package ships with Sublime and it is a Sublime package file. Now that's just a zip file with a different extension, but it's stored off in the uh, directory where Sublime is installed and you have, if you wanted to view the contents of this before Package Resource Viewer existed, you'd have to find the location of that file and then open it in an external tool that knows how to edit uh, or open a zip file and then look inside the file that way. Here, it was just that easy to find and the file and open it up. Now, to be fair, in recent versions of Sublime for the past, I'm not sure, uh, a year or so, maybe even two years at this point, there is a command in the command palette called view package file. We've seen this in a lot of videos on the channel here. And if you choose that, you get a list of every package resource in every package that's currently in Sublime. And we could type C single file, and here's the C single file dot Sublime build file, and I can hit enter and view the exact same file. So that particular functionality of package resource viewer, not quite as key as it once was because this functionality is now built into Sublime. Now that said, as we just saw, when you use Package Resource Viewer, it shows you a hierarchical view of the packages and their contents, which can make it easier to browse, whereas View Package File just shows you a big list, which can be a little confusing and cluttered if you're uh, not into that sort of thing. Although in the case of C single file dot sublime build, if you didn't know that it was in the C++ package, this is an easier way to do that. So using both of these uh, mechanisms can be key here. Something else to note is that because this file comes from a sublime package file, view package file made this file read only. No matter how much I type, I can't modify this file at all. But if I was to close it and use package resource viewer to open a resource and again say C++ and C single file dot sublime build, I can modify the file. So if you wanted to make changes to a file, this is an important uh, way to do that. It makes it a little bit easier for you. Now, in my TCC Sublime build file, this is where I got what the file regex should look like and what the working dir and selector should be. And of course the shell command was slightly different, but that's an example of building on an existing thing. Now let's say you actually wanted to make a modification to a Sublime package file of some sort. So let's go ahead and close this file. Now we know when I run a build, I push control B and it builds and says, hello world. And it says down there finished in 1.1 seconds. Now, what if you wanted that to have a little bit more time on the end of it to more uh, decimals of precision on the time for some reason? Well, we know from our videos on build systems and how they work that this is actually the exec command that's doing this. And in particular, if we were to use view package file to look at the exec.py file and we jumped down to line 361 in this particular version of Sublime, we can see that there is this text that says finished in and finished in with exit code and the 0.1f in both of these is what's giving the time with one decimal of precision. So if we wanted to make a change here to make these bigger, this is the place to change it. But remember, we used view package file. We can't type in here because this is part of a Sublime package file. Now, it is important to mention if you're newish to Sublime or you're not sure how the package ecosystem works, you should never ever modify a Sublime package file unless you manually created it. 
And the reason for that is whether it's a Sublime package file that ships with Sublime or one that package control installed and package control installs most packages as Sublime package files. When upgrades happen to Sublime or to a package that package control upgrades, those upgrades happen by completely deleting the old package file and putting a new updated one in its place. So if you modify a package file, everything will work great until one day there's an upgrade and your changes are gone. And best case scenario, you're inconvenienced. Worst case scenario, you can't remember what your changes were. Fortunately, you can get around that by creating something which is called an override. And that's a particularly large topic. We don't want to get into it in super detail here. But in general, if there is a packet, sublime package file, say for example, the default package, which is where the exec.py is, if there is a folder named default in the packages folder, then any of the files in that folder are considered to be part of the default package. And if a file in that unpacked folder has the exact same name and location inside that package as the Sublime package file, Sublime will use that version of the file over the one that's in the Sublime package file, i.e. it overwrites or overrides that particular file, which is why this mechanism is called that. Now that means that as long as that file exists, Sublime always uses that one, even if the package is upgraded, which makes your changes remain and is the reason why uh, package control installs most packages as Sublime package files to make these sorts of changes easier to do. Now, we could manually create an override out of this if we wanted to, but in order to do so, we would have to save as this file, find the packages folder, go in there. Now we have to create a folder in here named default because this file comes from the default package. Save this as exec.py because that's the name in the other package and the case has to match exactly. And then once that's done, we could make modifications to this file, except we used view package file to open it, so we can't type in it. We'd have to close the file and reopen it to be able to edit it, and that's a lot of steps to take, particularly if the package file you want to modify is deep nested in the hierarchy of a package. But as it transpires, this is where package resource viewer shines. So we're going to use package resource viewer like so, and again, we're going to pick open resource and hit enter, and it's the default package we want to modify modify something in and it's the exec.py that we want to modify and again if we search for finished in here's the locations of those two things now because we used package resource viewer to edit these we could modify both of these to say perhaps 0 0.3 and I'm going to press save and it has saved the file and let's go ahead and see what happened. If I say browse packages from the command palette, my packages folder opens up and we can see there is a folder in here named default that wasn't there a second ago, it was just created. And inside there's an exec.py, that's the file we just modified. So just as simply as pressing save in this buffer, we have created our override. And now if we come back to hello.c and run the build, we can see that this actually finished in 0.096 seconds. Now remember, I also mentioned previously that as long as this exec.py file exists in the default folder in the packages folder, and we just saw how to look at that, Sublime will always use this version of the file over the one in the Sublime package file. And that holds true whether that Sublime package file is updated in any way whatsoever, this version of the file will always take precedence. Now that does mean if you make changes to a file like this, you have to be a little bit careful because now, say in a future build of Sublime Text, this plugin is changed to add more functionality or fix a bug. Everybody else that hasn't modified this file will see those changes and we won't because we are masking the file with our override here. So you have to be a little bit careful about that. And that is why you should never ever use the commands extract package or extract all packages that package resource viewer adds. Unless you really, really know what it is that you're doing and you have a very specific reason for wanting to do this, 
you don't want to use these commands. And even then, there's probably a safer way to do it. Because if I said extract package and chose the package I would like to extract, like say the default package, uh, it won't let me do that in particular one. Uh, say the action script package, that entire contents of that package would be dropped out into the packages folder. And that means no matter what happens to the action script package, I have blocked updates for that entire thing. And if you also did the same thing with extract all packages, you've blocked every package from ever being updated. So be very careful about using those aspects of the command. Now, I don't want to scare you by saying that you should never create an override like this, because as we just saw, it is a very handy way to make changes. You might also do something like this if you want to modify something in the Sublime Text main menu, for example, if you want to permanently remove an item item that's there by default, you would have to do that by creating an override and things of that nature. It's safe to do as long as you're aware of the pitfalls. And as it transpires, there is a package that will help you keep track of the overrides that you have created and let you know when they're out of date. It's a package I created, full disclosure, and we're going to talk about that in next week's video. So there we have a introduction to the package resource viewer package. Now, as we've seen, it's not quite as necessary for viewing a resource as its name would suggest because that functionality is built into Sublime. But if you need to modify a package resource for any reason, and this includes your own user package as well, because remember your customizations to Sublime are part of the user package. So that will show up in that list and you can use it to open those files as well. Package resource viewer is an awesome way to get that done without having to use a whole bunch of steps. So I hope you you have found this information useful. This is the second package I generally install right after I install package control if I'm setting up a brand new installation of Sublime Text. And that's all I have for this video. If you found this in any way useful, please thumb and subscribe and share down below as you deem appropriate. And as always, if you have any questions or comments on the content of this video, any of my videos, or suggestions for other Sublime Text topics you'd like me to cover, you can drop those down in the comment section below, or you can hit me on Twitter at ODATNerd. But until that next video where we talk about the package that I created, this is ODATNerd asking you to please have a sublime day.